Chairwoman Maloney, Ranking Member Comer, and distinguished members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to participate in today's hearing. I appear before you today as a police commissioner in Buffalo, New York. It is also my privilege to testify on behalf of the Major City Chiefs Association. We're here today to discuss gun violence epidemic plaguing our nation. This hearing comes in the aftermath of multiple mass shootings that have devastated communities throughout the country, including my home city in Buffalo. Our communities are hurting, and we must continue to support them, the loved ones of the victims, and our brave first responders. On May 14, 2022, an 18-year-old white supremacist invaded our city and inflicted terror on the black community in a way never seen in Buffalo's history. He legally purchased a military-style weapon and body armor and then spent months practicing his shooting skills. He entered the Topps supermarket and opened fire on civilians, striking 13 and killing 10. He live-streamed this with a GoPro he had affixed to his helmet. Retired Buffalo police officer Aaron Salter, Jr., who I posthumously promoted to lieutenant and issued the department's highest honor, the Medal of Honor, was working top security that day. Aaron was helping an elderly shopper leave with her groceries when the shooting began. He did his best to warn customers while in a completely defensive position. He engaged the shooter as he entered, hitting him with at least one shot. It is often said that a good guy with a gun will stop a bad guy with a gun. Aaron was the good guy and was no match for what he went up against, a legal AR-15 with multiple high-capacity magazines. He had no chance. Assault weapons like the AR-15 are known for three things, how many rounds they fire, the speed at which they fire those rounds, and body count. This radicalized 18-year-old adult should have never been able to have access to the weapons he used to perpetrate this attack and the laws need to be enacted to ensure it never happens again. Buffalo police officers responded to tops and were able to take the shooter into custody within minutes. I have no doubt in my mind that their swift response time and handling of the situation saved lives. I would like to publicly thank them for, and the rest of the Buffalo Police Department for the heroism they showed on that day. Buffalo is known as a city of good neighbors. We are a resilient, culturally diverse community. We came together after this horrific tragedy, and we will continue to heal together. However, no city should have to go through this. And it is time to make changes to a system that is leaving blood on the sidewalks of our communities every day. In 2018, the MCCA adopted a firearms violence policy that would help mitigate the threat of gun violence without infringing on the constitutional rights or, re uh, or weakening due process. These reforms include requiring universal background checks, strengthening NICS definitions, and improving access to records, supporting the use of extreme risk protection orders, aggressively prosecuting straw purchasers and prohibited possessors, and banning assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. Polling shows the majority of Americans support these common-sense reforms, and Congress must act immediately to close the loopholes in our current system and the gaps that allow easy access to military-style weapons. Events like Buff the Buffalo Massacre, the shooting in Uvalde that took 21 lives, including 19 children, and the mass shootings in Laguna Woods and Tulsa are the situations that capture headlines. However, we must remember that gun violence epidemic extends well beyond these events. The grim reality is that shootings have become a daily occurrence in America's cities. Emerging trends like ghost guns and guns modified with switches continue to pose a challenge for law enforcement. Congress must update our laws to account for these new threats and carnage that has accompanied them. It will be nearly impossible to address the gun violence epidemic without first addressing the underlying violent crime problem. Unfortunately, the proactive policing that helps drive down violent crime has become a luxury for many departments. Law enforcement needs additional resources to bolster its response to violent crime. An overall lack of accountability for violent offenders is contributing to rising gun violence. In some major cities, DAs are not prosecuting serial firearm offenders, and judges continue to release offenders on low or no bond. To address these challenges, Congress must provide resources for U.S. Attorney's offices to support additional federal prosecutions as appropriate. Police chiefs see the horror of gun violence every day. Members of Congress share our solemn duty to protect the public. The MCCA will continue to call on elected representatives to eschew politics and take the necessary steps to address the gun violence epidemic. 
your leadership is needed now more than ever. Thank you.